Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, gardeners and homesteaders and everybody alike. Hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. And uh, yeah, we're going to get ready for fall. <clears throat> it's that time. It's never ending. And it all starts before you plant your garden. So we're going to clear out this bed and we're going to get it prepared. We're not going to plant it today, but we've just got to get it prepared for it. So let me show you the bed in question before you do. Look at this buckwheat, man. It is doing so good. It is just loaded with all kinds of pollinators in here. Beautiful. All right, so here's the bed. This is our tomato bed. It's that time of year. The disease strikes every time. Um, it's just we got a lot of rain for every night for like a week and then the humidity and it just took its toll on it and it took it fast and it's okay that's why we plant determinate tomatoes so we can get our harvest and get out of there but you can see like these right here they're shooting up and yeah there's some flowers on them but they're just not really going to produce um all of my determinants have always done this so we're just going to do what we got to do and get rid of them the important part is not only we're going to get rid of them but we've got to get the soil ready for it. Um, you know, if the dirt's no good, the plant's not gonna grow. So we wanna get in there and we wanna supercharge that soil for the, uh, for the next planting. So it's kind of what we're working for. Um, that bed's really tired, it's been used a lot. So we're gonna put a couple amendments down and then we're just gonna let it sit. And we're not gonna let it sit for long, but just enough to let stuff start to break down to feed that soil. Hey, that I do this it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong um, when it comes to redoing a bed and just getting it ready for the next season there's a lot of different thought processes behind it and i don't think there's really necessarily a wrong way to do it i think the only thing that would be really be wrong would be just not doing anything at all you know um, it's very deceiving when you work on the garden and you're talking about soil because you can't really see what's going on in it. You know, you don't know if it's good, bad, or what. So we want to make sure that we're taking care of it to the best of our ability. And we're using our knowledge that we've gained over the years to kind of amend, add nutrients that we know are coming away. Because it's not like the garden's sitting here telling you with a sign. It does tell you, but just not an easy way to be like hey i need this i need that where's my phosphorus where's my nitrogen you know so this is just all part of building that up those are tomato plants for this year now i'm not going to put those in the compost lord knows i'm not going to give them to the chickens because last time i did everybody freaked out and it just wasn't worth it so we're not going to do that this year even though the chickens have eaten them for years and apparently nightshades supposedly give them problems but haven't had that but we're not going to do that either we're just going to kind of put them out the reason why is they've got disease on them so we don't want to put them into the the compost and just have that kind of grow each and every year so we're just going to leave it like it is now here we go here's the garden bed i haven't weeded it at all we had that one plant that fell over that i swore i was going to come out and fix and never did and it, i mean this kind of is what it is and there is a gap right here and this is really the only place the weeds grew so we'll be able to come in here now pull all these up and then call it a day for that and then it's time to move on to the soil now at this point you don't really need to do a whole lot and the reason why is because i've got about two to three weeks before i'm going to plant this which is going to work out really good so you can see right now it's bare Again, this is a bed that we want to eventually let rest for the winter, so we don't want to put a really long crop on it, but we do want to plant it again. So I'm not really going to do a whole, whole lot to it right now. I'll definitely come back after I amend it, and I'll just kind of get the weeds out around it. And because the tomatoes were there, I need to clean up all of this area because that'll help keep the weed seeds out of there, and then just start building it back up. Um, I'm not even really going to mulch it because I'm going to direct sow in here. So I'll mulch after I direct sow. What we know is no matter what you plant, you always need some kind of nitrogen. You might not need a lot, but you need some. So I'm not putting blood meal in there because the raccoon will come back. Um, 
I shot at him, did not hit him, but he hasn't been back since. Now that my tomatoes have kind of quit producing, he seems to have a uh, little taste for the t for the mater. So now that those are gone, and we don't have any like actual like juicy fruits going on, he seems to have kind of gone somewhere else for now. So we're not going to invite him back. But I do want to put my insurance policy in and then our other fertilizer in and just get that cooking in the soil. This is what I'm using for an insurance policy. Uh, that's what you really need to see. Alfalfa pellets. And that's all they are. They're basically just crunched up alfalfa. I'll put it in pretty heavy because it's not something that's just going to all of a sudden be like bam new, new, uh, nitrogen and nutrients in it which is just gives nitrogen but what it's going to do is as it breaks down and works in it, so it's going to slowly add it in and so over time this will continue to add into the soil so we're going to add that and then i'm going to put my well balanced fertilizer in there as well and then we're just going to scratch that in pretty good into the soil so let me get that down and then I'll bring you back and we'll, uh, we'll see what we're going to do. All right. So we look down close. You can see the pellets all in here. And we put a pretty fair amount in. Uh, it doesn't have to be in any certain way. Now I did kind of plop the fertilizer down. So I am going to unfortunately have to spread that. But these will, once they get wet, they will pop. I don't know pop, but they'll expand. And then what that'll do is then it starts to break down so until it gets wet it doesn't really do anything now the humidity in the evenings and stuff like that can definitely help with that um obviously a rain will a fertilizer will do it anything like that but otherwise that's just again it's just an insurance policy it doesn't give high amounts but you know every little bit counts so we're putting rutabagas back into this bed and rutabaga is not really a very nitrogen hungry crop nor does it need a lot As a matter of fact it's the opposite it doesn't need a lot because it's a root crop so knowing that we know how we can handle this bed and so all i'm doing now is just kind of scratching the surface doesn't really matter how it gets in. i'm gonna work this bed again anyways so i'm just trying to get the fertilizer spread a little bit and in good contact with the soil so that it can begin to break down because since this is organic fertilizer in about two weeks it will start to interact with the soil and it will start to release its nutrients so that is what we want because that is just about the time we are going to direct seed we may do it a little bit early we may do it a little bit later but see just like that it's all in one thing I did forget about this year is I forgot I planted green beans because the tomatoes had gotten so big. So this is going to open up more sun for them and they should probably get a little bit stronger and we'll be able to start harvesting uh, more. To be totally honest, I haven't harvested at all because I totally forgot about them. I just couldn't see them. So, you know, that was that different variety. That was those ace bush tomatoes. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on that. And uh, hopefully we can get back into the green beans. That They look healthy, so that's good. I just forgot they were growing. Now we're forecasted to get some more rain, so we'll let this do its thing. Um, just to kind of go over, also the uh, black-eyed peas over here are starting to produce, so that's really good. And again, because the sun comes to my back this time of day, uh, those tomatoes were kind of shading it a little bit, so that's it just let more light in, which is a good time for to do it. So there's a benefit behind pulling things out. You don't want to just leave stuff there that's not doing anything you want to go ahead and be proactive and get rid of it and then you can have your beds you know other things can thrive because there is sunlight stealing uh, there is nutrient stealing so those tomatoes were probably taking nutrients from the other plants in there so once we get them out we're good to go and then this will charge the soil and it's really important you do this i can't stress this enough if you think that you're just gonna go out there and just keep planting over and over and over without adding anything to your soil, you are sadly mistaken and you're gonna be really upset. Um, that's why we do things like this, like pre-charging the soil, pre-planting fertilizers, cover crops, crop rotation, resting beds, mulching, 
it's funny, like all of these things that we do are all about feeding the soil. We think it's about feeding the plant, but in reality, what it really is, is it's getting these, the soil ready so that we can keep going long term. You know, gardening soil, it's, it's a marathon for it. That's really what it is. It's just a marathon for the soil. You don't want to sprint and get it up and fast and go. You want to build it up so that you can continue to use it and it will continue to feed year after year or after year, season after season. And you may have to take breaks and you may be able to push some, but you got to learn your limits. And the only way to do it is to test it out. So this bed is ready to be planted when we're ready to be planted now, not the other way around. Good.